So welcome to the next topic, chemical formulae or, and chemical equations, also known as stoichiometry. So the learning objectives of this small unit are to write word equations and balance chemical equations. This also involves uh, something called state symbols, calculate reacting masses using experimental data and chemical equations, and finally be able to calculate percentage yields of reaction. So what are chemical reactions? Well, chemical reactions occur when bonds are formed or broken. They involve changes in matter. Okay, so you can either have a, a physical change, like a change in state, or you can have chemical changes because you're making new compounds or new materials with new properties. And you also have energy changes where energy is either released or absorbed by the reaction. So symbols represent elements, formulas represent uh, compounds, and chemical equations describe what's actually happening in the chemical reaction. So an important concept which we touched upon in atomic uh, structure is valency. And valency of an element is the number of electrons in an element uh, on the outer ring which it loses and gains uh, or shares in the form of covalent bonding to form a compound. And here are the valencies of the elements. Okay, so group one has a valency of plus one, group two plus two, group three plus three, Group 4 they share, so it's either plus or minus 4. Group 5 is now minus 3, because 5 plus 3 equals 8, and we want 8 for that stability. Uh, group 6 is minus 2. Group, mi uh, group 7 minus 1. And helium, uh, which is a noble gas, in fact group 0, is a valency of 0, because it doesn't have to exchange any electrons to form that stable outer ring. So we can now write chemical formula using these valencies. So there are three simple rules. Write down the valencies of two elements. Write down their symbols in the same order of the elements in their name. And add numbers as subscripts after the symbols to balance the valencies. Don't worry about putting one. Now what I mean by that is if you have lithium, okay, lithium plus, then the subscript's going to be uh, one, but we just ignore that one. We don't use one. Okay, so the example we'll use is two examples. One is ionic bonding, magnesium chloride. So magnesium is in group two, so the valency is plus two. Chlorine is in group seven, so the valency is minus one. Okay, so it must be MgCl to start off with. Okay, so it's going to be Mg2 plus and Cl minus. Let's leave it as is. Okay, so in order to balance that out, you need two chlorides. Okay, so it's going to be MgCl2. The second example is from ammonia, which is a covalent compound. So nitrogen is in group 5, so its valency is minus 3. Hydrogen is in group 1, so the valency is plus 1. So in step 3, it's going to basically be, uh, or step 2, it's going to be right in their symbols in the same order as the elements in their name, so it's NH. Then to balance it out, you will need 3 uh, H's, because 3 times 1 will cancel out negative 3 times 1. It will become balanced. So in terms of chemical equations, they're basically a description. They describe the kind of reactants and products and their relative amounts in the reaction. So here's an example here. It's going to be uh, aluminium reacting with oxygen to form aluminium oxide, Okay, which looks like that. And those, the aluminium and oxygen, are known as reactants. Okay, they react to form the product, which is on, always on the right-hand side. So reactants are on the left-hand side, and products are always on the right-hand side. And the letters S, G, and L are the physical states of the compound. So S is for solid. Okay, S is for solid. Uh, G is for gas and L is for liquid. There is a, uh, another one, which is a Q, which is for aqueous, and that means that it's dissolved in water. Okay, so for example, um, sodium chloride could be dissolved in water, it would be aqueous. The numbers at the front, okay, 4, 3, and 2, are known as stoichiometric coefficients. So breaking down the parts of the reaction equation, uh, chemical equations show the changing of reactants, okay, the molecules on the left-hand side, into products, which are the molecules on the right-hand side. 
the plus side, a plus sign separates molecules on the same side, and the arrow reads as yield. Okay, so for example, for this, equa this symbolic equation here, this reads an atom of carbon plus a molecule of oxygen react to yield a molecule of carbon dioxide. Okay, that's what it actually means in words. So going back to the original uh, equation we looked at with aluminium and oxygen reacting. Okay, so what that's really saying is not four grams of aluminium reacting with three grams of oxygen to yield two grams of aluminium oxide. What it's actually saying is that four aluminium atoms plus three oxygen molecules give two molecules of aluminium oxide um, in both symbolic or word equations. Okay, so the mass has nothing to do with the number in front of it. Okay, so in terms of chemical equations, because the atoms are present in a reaction at the beginning, or the same atoms at least, uh, and at the end, the amount of atoms does not change. Okay, so you start off with X number of atoms at the start, you'll end up with X number of atoms at the end. They'll just be rearranged into different compounds and molecules. Okay, and this is known as the law of conservation of matter. Okay, so 100% of the atoms go in. Okay, something happens in terms of a chemical reaction, and you've got 100% coming out. Okay, they can be uh, in different forms, but the, the amount going in in terms of mass will be equal to the amount going out. Okay. And this was uh, considered by a French chemist named Lavoisier. And because of this conservation of principal matter, an equation must be balanced. So the number of atoms on the left hand side has to equal the number of atoms on the right hand side. Okay. And there's two ways to represent this, uh, a word equation and later a chemical equation. And we're going to focus on word equations now and then move on to chemical equations. So a word equation describes a chemical change using the names of the reactants and products. Okay, so write the word equation now for the reaction of methane gas with oxygen gas to form carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so pause the video now and on a piece of paper, write that possible word equation down. Okay, so what you should have got was methane plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide plus water. Okay, there's an arrow between it. Okay, that's known as a word equation. We're not dealing with any symbols, we're just dealing with words. Okay, so the methane and oxygen are the reactants, and the carbon dioxide and water are the products. Okay, so you react methane and oxygen together to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, and the symbolic equation is CH4, which is the symbol equation for methane, plus O2, which is the symbol equation for oxygen, yields CO2, which is the symbol equation for carbon dioxide, plus water, which is a symbol, uh, H2O, which is a symbolic equation for water. Okay, so that's the word equation on top and the symbolic equation on the bottom. Okay, and to balance it, you have to put two in front of the water, okay, because the number of uh, hydrogen atoms on both sides has to equal. Okay, so we have four on this side, so we now need four on that side. Now we have two oxygens on the right-hand side, which is fine with that. And we have one carbon here. Yes, we do. And again, oh, we've only got two. Oh, we don't. We've got an extra two oxygens. So what do we have to do? We have to put two oxygens on the left hand side. Now that balances because number of oxygens on both sides equals. So in terms of this uh, balancing of uh, symbolic equations, let's just break that down a little bit more. Okay, so this is what it actually looks like as a, a molecular structure. That's methane plus two oxygen molecules. Okay, so that's what two means there. You have one plus another one, which gives two overall. Oops, make that equals, equals two oxygen atoms all over. We have one carbon dioxide molecule plus the two oxygen molecules. Okay, okay. one plus one, giving two overall. So that's what the, the big number, the stoichiometric coefficient, is saying. When we see that, it says that we have two molecules of oxygen. 
okay? And the oxygen molecule is, of course, made of two oxygen atoms, okay? In this case, two ox one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms for water. That's what that is saying. That's what that two means there, is that we have two hydrogens for every molecule of water, okay? And you'll see that the number of reactants equals the number of products. So you have one carbon in, on the left-hand side, you'll have one carbon on the right-hand side, you have four hydrogens on the left-hand side, we have four hydrogens on the right-hand side, we have four oxygens on the uh, left-hand side, and we then have four oxygens on the uh, right-hand side. Okay, so it's balanced. Okay, so now we're going to look at unbalancing and balancing equations. Okay, so here is a reaction between hydrogen and chlorine gas to give hydrochloride gas. Okay, and you can see from the visual representation that it's not balanced. Because, as you can see from the symbolic equation, H2 plus Cl2 giving HCl, that the uh, on the left-hand side, the number of hydrogens is 2. Okay, 1. Two. And on the left-hand side also, there are two chlorine atoms. Okay, so we're looking at the atoms. And on the right-hand side, you only have one hydrogen here and one chlorine here. Okay, so it's not balanced. So in order to balance it, you have to have the same number of atoms on each side. So now... When you do the calculations, you can see that you have two hydrogens on that side. Okay, one, two, one, two, and one, 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 or one, two, sorry, one, two, and one, two. Okay, you ha have now two hydrogens atoms on the right hand side and also two chlorine atoms on the right hand side. It is now balanced. Okay. So what is the meaning of chemical formula? Well, let's just break down some examples. So water, the chemical symbol is H2O. What that means is that one molecule of water, okay, which is a diagram here, comprises of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, okay? So you have the oxygen atom here and your two hydrogen atoms here. Two H2O, however, means now you have two molecules of water, not just one, which means now you have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. Okay, one, two oxygen atoms and one, two, three, four hydrogen atoms. And H2O2 means you now have one molecule of hydrogen peroxide, which looks like that. That means you have two hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms in the molecule of hydrogen peroxide. So this is where the subscripts and coefficients come in. Okay, so C means you have one atom of carbon. Oxygen, similar, means you have one atom of oxygen. But now, by putting that subscript of O2, it means you have one molecule of oxygen consisting now of two atoms of oxygen. Whereas CO means you have one molecule of carbon monoxide consisting of one atom of carbon and one atom of oxygen. And CO2 means you have one molecule of carbon dioxide and consisting of one atom of carbon attached to two atoms of oxygen. And then finally, the coefficient says now you have three molecules of carbon dioxide, and each of those carbon dioxide molecules consists of one carbon and two oxygen atoms. So subscripts tell you how many atoms of a particular element are in a particular compound, whereas the coefficient tells you about the number of molecules of the compound there is. Okay, so there's an example there of 5H2O. 5 tells you the amount of molecules you have of water, and the subscripts tell you you have, in each of those molecules of water, you have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So 5H2O has 10 hydrogen atoms, 5 times 2, plus 5 oxygen atoms. So what does it have to do with balancing a chemical equation? Well, a balanced chemical equation is one where the number of atoms on one side equals the number of atoms on the other side. 
Okay, and that is the relationship between the conservation of mass and the fact that a balanced equation will always have the same number of atoms on each element on both sides of the equation. So let's look at an example. Determine whether the following equation is balanced. So pause the video now and make a decision on whether you think it is indeed balanced. Okay, so let's look at this. On the left hand side we have two sodium atoms and on the right hand side we have two sodium atoms. Okay, that works. On the left hand side we have two hydrogen atoms and on the right hand side we have one times two so we have two here and two here. Mm, okay, so we've got four hydrogens on that side. Mm, that doesn't look very balanced to me. Uh, and on the oxygen side, on the left hand side, we have one on this side. And we have two on this side. Remember, two means you've got two times one oxygen atom. Okay, so we have one on this side and two on this side. So therefore, to balance that out, we're going to need two waters. Let's see if we're right. Indeed we are. Okay. Right, so the first thing you do is you write a word equation for the reaction. Okay, then we write the correct formulas for the reactants and the products. And then finally determine the coefficients that make the equation balance. Remember the coefficients are the big numbers. Okay. So, there are four basic steps to balancing a chemical equation. First thing you do is you write the correct formula for the reactants and products, and do not try to balance it yet. You must then write the correct formulas first, and once you write them correctly, do not change the formulas. Okay, the formulas do not change. They are stuck in concrete after you've written them down. Only the coefficients can change. Find the number of atoms of each element on the left side, compare them against the number of atoms on the same element on the right side, and then determine where to place coefficients in front of formulas so that the left side has the same number of atoms as the right side for each element in order to balance the equation. And then check to see the answer. If the number of atoms on both sides of the equation are now balanced and the coefficients are the lowest possible whole number ratios. So when balancing a chemical equation, you may add coefficients in front of the compound to balance the reaction, but you cannot change the subscripts. Okay, so for example, if we have H2O, you can put 2 in front of it, but you cannot, you cannot change the uh, subscripts. That's a definite no-no. Changing the subscripts changes the compound as subscripts are determined by the balance of electrons, um, charges for ionic compounds, and sharing for covalent. Okay, so here's some helpful hints from myself. Take one element at a time, working left to right, except for hydrogen and oxygen. Save hydrogen for next to last, and oxygen until last. If everything balances except for oxygen, and there is no way to balance oxygen with a whole number, double all the coefficients and try again. Reason being that oxygen is diatomic. What do we mean by diatomic? It means that they form molecules which have two atoms in them. Okay, O2. And polyatomic ions that appear on both sides of the equation should be balanced as independent units. Okay, let's just work through an example here. Nitrogen oxide plus oxygen uh, gas giving nitrogen dioxide, which contributes to smog. Okay, so is it balanced? How many nitrogens do we have on the left-hand side? We have just the one. Okay, we also have one here, so that works. So nitrogen's all good. Oxygen, we have one here, plus now two here. It's two because we've got O2, so we have three in total. Yet we only have two on this side, so oxygen does not balance. Okay, so it's not balanced. Is this balanced? Okay, so now we have two oxygens on this side, so one plus one giving two oxygens, plus two oxygen here. Is this balanced? Yes, but oxygen cannot exist as an atom by itself. It has to be O2, so that won't work. Okay, 
That's not okay. And is this balanced? Uh, NO plus half O2 giving NO2. So we have one nitrogen on the left hand side. We've got one nitrogen on this side. We have now uh, one half times two is one here. We've got one oxygen here, one oxygen here, and one oxygen here. I'm sorry, two oxygens here. Uh, so that's going to be balanced. That actually does work. Okay, is this okay? Yes, it is. Um, I guess you could argue we could double it to get rid of the half, but it looks pretty good to me. Okay, so the important point to remember is that we really should be using whole numbers. That the two to the left of nitrogen dioxide gas plus NO2 gas refers to the number of molecules present in a balanced equation. Okay. There's a multiplier for every atom in that particular molecule. So that means now that instead of having two oxygens here, okay, we now have two times two, which equals four oxygen atoms in NO2. Yeah, in this particular part of NO2. So the subscript in 2 in O2 and NO2 refers to the number of atoms in this type and are present in each molecule or possibly ionic compound. But in this particular case, it's a covalent molecule. Let's try it out for yourself. Write a balanced equation for the reaction between chlorine and sodium bromide to produce bromine and sodium chloride. Okay, so pause the video now and see if you can do it yourself. Okay, so welcome back. So the first thing you do is write a word equation for the reaction. Okay, so you should have got that chlorine plus sodium bromide is bromine plus sodium chloride. Okay, a nice uh, sub uh, displacement reaction. Okay, then we write the correct formulas for all the reactants and products. Okay, careful of course with Cl2, it's diatomic. Okay, making sure we only have one sodium and one bromine for sodium bromide and sodium chloride also is a one-to-one -one ratio. And then determine the coefficients, which means you're going to need two sodium bromides and two sodium chlorides to balance the equation. Okay, so you can work it out, or you can count the number of sodium atoms and bromine atoms and chlorine atoms on each side. So that's the answer that you should have got. So hopefully you got that correct. Okay, second equation, practice. Write the balanced equation for the reaction between aluminium sulfate and calcium chloride to form a white precipitate of calcium sulfate. Again, pausing the video to see if you are on the right track. Okay, so write the word equation, which is thus, aluminium sulfate plus calcium chloride given calcium sulfate. And of course, aluminium chloride. And then write the correct formulas in. Okay, there we go. Be careful, of course, here with the brackets and aluminium sulfate. And then determine the coefficients to balance the equation. That's quite a hard one, but there we go. So three calcium chlorides, three calcium sulfates, and two aluminium chlorides. That's a harder example that you would be expected to be able to do. Okay, so we'll just now watch a quick video uh, reinforcing what we've learned in the lesson thus far. Mr. Kossi here with another chemistry lesson, and today we're going to talk about balancing chemical equations. Now, i got a warning here for you. If you're going to learn to balance equations and work with stoichiometry, you must study and prepare for your chemistry class. There are no magical solutions. You must study. You must learn to write equations. You must learn to write formulas. You must learn to write names. And there are lessons on these. You've just got to practice. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the conservation of mass, balancing equations, and then we're going to practice a few. You'll need a periodic table and your polyatomic ion sheet. And if you don't have that download, there's a URL here at the bottom of the page and just go to that URL and download your polyatomic ion PDF. You must know the periodic table, how to write chemical names. You must know chemical formulas and chemical equations. There's no sense 
trying to balance equations if you can't write them. And if you can't write them if you don't know how to write formulas and names. Conservation of mass. All right, let's get started. Mass cannot be created uh, or destroyed. It can only be changed from one form to another. Mass is conserved. What does that mean to us? Well, that means the masses of the products must equal the masses of the reactant. What you end up with is what you should have started with. So you may need to balance the equations you write. Here's some balancing hints. Treat polyatomic ions as a unit. Start with the most complex. Change the coefficients only. Do not change the subscripts once you know what the uh, compound is. And then check all the other substances every time that you do something. And make sure you didn't change the balance of everything. Things need to balance. Just like the equations in algebra, they must balance. Now here's a warning. Once the chemical formulas have been determined, you cannot change the subscripts, all right? You cannot change those subscripts. If you need to change the subscript, you wrote the wrong formula to begin with. Let's look at an example. Nitrogen combines with hydrogen to produce ammonia. First, let's write an equation. N2 plus H2 is NH3. You need to remember that nitrogen and hydrogen are polyatomic, or I should say they're diatomic. Now balance the H's. And we do that by finding the lowest common multiple of two and three, which is six. Adjust the coefficients. And remember, you can only change the coefficients. Check the nitrogen and N2 equals 2N. That's true. And it's balanced. That was a pretty easy one. Let's look at another example, maybe a little more difficult. Iron 3 hydroxide decomposes into iron 3 oxide and gives us water. Let's start with uh, the most complex to me. That would be the iron 3 oxide. And some of you might think it's the iron 3 hydroxide. Doesn't matter. This is where I want to start. And I'm going to balance the irons. Now notice that I need to put a 2 in the coefficient there. And then I need to check the O and H's. 2 times 3 is 6. So then I could change that to a 3. And I should have 3 oxygens and 6 hydrogens. It gives me a balanced equation. Again, uh, if you don't know how to do the um, factors, if you don't recognize factors and things, that might uh, be a little bit of a problem. Uh, you need to be up on your algebra a little bit. Here's another example. Copper and silver nitrate. Give us copper nitrate and uh, actually it's copper 2 nitrate and uh, silver. This time I'm going to take roll. One copper, one copper, one silver, one silver, one nitrate, two nitrates. And so it's not balanced. But I could just uh, balance that by changing the AgNO3 or the silver nitrate coefficient to 2 and the silver coefficient to 2. And by doing that, I'm going to have a balanced equation. Practice time. Balance the following equation. Well, I'm going to start with the uh, barium phosphate. And note there are three bariums here, but only one there. And so I'm going to change the coefficients. And notice that uh, I have two phosphates uh, on the right side, but only one on the left side. And so now notice uh, I put a two over there and we're good. That gives me six chlorines on that side and six sodiums on that side. So that means I need to balance the sodium chloride, put a six there. And I think that if we look at it, I'm gonna rewrite it, that's balanced. Three bariums, three bariums. Two phosphates, two phosphates. Now remember, keep polyatomic ions together, uh, usually. And then I have six chlorine and six sodium on each side. We're good. All right, as usual, if you have any questions, send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com and check out my PowerPoint videos and things at mrkazi.com or mrkazi'sworld.com, either one. And subscribe to my YouTube. So finally, let's look at uh, being able to use this chemical equation to calculate quantities. Okay, so first some rules. Elements always react in the same ratio to form a known compound. 
total mass and reaction going in equals total mass of reaction going out. Okay, that's the conservation of mass principle. Okay, and for example, 12 grams of carbon react with 32 grams of oxygen to give carbon dioxide gas. How much carbon will react with 128 grams of oxygen? Okay, so the way to work out is using ratios. Okay, so you have a equation. Um, so 128 divided by 32 equals x divided by 12, or 4 equals x divided by 12. So therefore, x will be 4 times 12, or 48 grams of carbon. And finally, let's just look at percentage yield calculations. So percentage yield can be calculated by comparing the yield, or the amount of product you get, um, than what you would have obtained in theory. And if all the reactants have converted, uh, there would be 100% yield. Um, so that means that all the reactants turned into products and there was no loss, which is unlikely in, in chemistry. Usually you do lose some of the products. Okay. So the formula for the percentage yield calculation is, which you have to know, the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100 over 1. So we'll just give you a worked example here. So copper oxide reacts with sulfuric acid to make copper sulfate and water. Okay, in the experiment, 1.6 grams of dry copper sulfate crystals are made. The theoretical yield is 2. Um, so to calculate the percentage yield of the copper sulfate, you use the equation. Okay, so it's going to be actual yield is 1.6. Theoretical yield is going to be 2 grams. Okay, so 1.6 divided by 2 times 100 or 80%. And that's pretty much all you need to know for this part of the topic uh, before we start again next year.